what I consider to be mixed media work. So that while fabric is the basic ingredient, I also incorporate painting. Josephine Baker, for instance, has the banana skirt. There are earrings and um, a necklace on the Simone de Beauvoir quilt. Some of the installations have shoes. Shoes represent a kind of consistent uh, motif, especially in the family series and the baby quilts. I attempt in my work to put to push quilting as far as I can, uh, so that even ultimately the philosophical question, what is a quilt, is ultimately raised. My quilts incorporate some soft sculpture techniques, and I think this is very natural because that, in a way, is where my artistic journey began. If we go back to, say, the genealogy uh, in, in my childhood, um, I was very interested in uh, soft sculpture dolls in the early 80s as a preteen. Soft sculpture, that's the terminology that Rache uses for her work. She talks about the fact that as a child, she was um, on that, that sort of first edge of children who were captivated by the Cabbage Patch dolls and that kind of soft sculpture doll making technique um, really enthralled her when she was young. She loved the dolls and when she began to embrace quilting uh, in college herself, she incorporated many of those techniques for her work. I attended Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, which had a very lively artistic culture, and it was there that I first became interested in making quilts. Female quilters from the South tend to be generalized as unlettered, um, unstudied, um, women who make quilts to sleep under. You couldn't sleep under one of Roche's quilts. They're all art quilts that would hang on a wall. Every individual quilt is a walk by faith, and I don't necessarily have to have all the answers in the very beginning. Roche is very educated and really very thoughtful about her work, trying to experiment as an artist with quilts. In contrast to the Alabama quilters that get so much public attention, who are making utilitarian functional quilts and are discovered as quilters by accident. The needle is the woman's plow. I really like that image. It says a lot. And certainly my own investment in quilt making is very, very related to the particular domestic arts. I don't think that prior to the, the discoveries of the quilters from Wilcox County that resulted in the Alabama Freedom Quilting Bee and the G's Ben phenomenon, that these women introduced themselves as quilters. This wasn't a part of their identity. They wouldn't say that any more than they say that they cooked or they cleaned. This was just a craft that they had to do to keep their families warm. And I, um, I celebrate that kind of quilter in my book as well and try very hard to document that kind of quilter. But I don't think it's reasonable for people to think that that's the only kind of black quilter that there is. All of that has influenced me. Um, just being a woman, for instance, I think has influenced my own investment in quilt making and so that history is also very um, fascinating to, to think about in some ways. Many of the women prominent from, from Alabama are quilters. Rosa Parks, probably the most well-known African-American woman from Alabama, was quoted as saying that no woman of her age in Alabama couldn't quilt. Uh, so Parks is a quilter, her mother was a quilter, many of the women of the Montgomery bus boycott were quilters. These were individuals who quilted because it was a necessity in the household for keeping their children and their grandchildren warm. The figures that I choose uh, to represent in my quilts are ones that are genuinely fascinating to me. Well, doing this interview in Paris, I would say my favorite quilt of hers is the Josephine Baker. In the 
that Josephine Baker, quote, playing Venus hot to trot, I think also helps to communicate some of the political valences of that particular piece. I think that what Riche is doing with that, with the Josephine Baker quilt, is an appropriation of a negative stereotype or a negative moment in African and African American history when an African woman who was referred to as the Venus Hottentot was displayed uh, a real human being as though she were a mask or a painting or an object. The term hot to trot plays on that concept of the Hottentot, of course, to acknowledge the extent to which she was made a spectacle. Well, her legacy has also been very valued. Taking that unfortunate moment in black history and turning it on its heels with Josephine Baker, who is depicted as having controlled the her her image and her body and gaining from it being exposed. The term is meant to suggest that even though uh, she uh, was associated with that image, the, the famous image of 1925, topless in the banana skirt, that wasn't necessarily the only aspect of her identity. <laughs> Roche has a real love affair with Paris, with France. And I've interviewed her at her home and come in and, um, you know, Nina Simone is, French music is playing. Um, and she invested a lot, saved a, 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 for a long time before making her first trip to Paris. Very important to her. And I think of African American females associated with France, Josephine Baker is certainly the most prominent. In the case of Josephine Baker, for instance, I began to think about her uh, very intently, I think, around the early years of, of this decade. I had a Josephine Baker CD that I would play in my apartment, and I didn't have any art. Uh, representing her other than a small photograph and so I thought that I'd just make a quilt and so have a piece of Josephine Baker art in my own space. Almost any aspect of African-American